Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Stories That Matter. Today we'll be talking about the issue in Manipur. We have been seeing a lot of news reports about the violence uh, due to the riots that broke out in Manipur uh, very recently. And it took me some time to research about it, hence the delay in covering the story. While I have been covering the story in my newsletter, The Choice, if you are not receiving The Choice, if you are not a subscriber, you can let me know in the comment section below. You can message me on social media and reach out to me and I will add you to the subscribers broadcast list, which is on WhatsApp or on email if you would like to receive it on your mail every Sunday at 10 a.m. So make sure to subscribe to The Choice because I've been covering a lot of important news stories that are usually going missing and that directly impact us normal common people. And coming back to this episode, we are going to talk about the Manipur violence. Now this all has, this entire debate really started after a video went viral and people really started talking about it and Manipur really came into the light of our media and our government and us citizens as well due to this viral video. A 26 second video showing men who were as young as 15 years old and maybe even aged more than that were seen harassing two women after they strip them naked. This is quite graphic. I would really recommend you to not watch this video if you are sensitive to such topics, but this is important information that therefore I'm not showing you any videos. I'm not trying to show you any kind of graphic pictures that are happening in Manipur. Now, at least one of these women was age 21. The other one was around the age of 40. The 21 year old was also gang raped according to the FIR that was filed by the two victims. The video emerged after two months of the incident taking place. The incident actually happened on May 4th. But on May 3rd, there was an internet ban in Manipur due to the violence that broke out between the two ethnic groups. So which were these two ethnic groups? The one of the groups was the Maiti group, which was mainly Hindu. And the other group is predominantly a Christian tribe called the Kukizo tribe. Now, the Maitis, they constitute more than half of Manipur's 3.5 million population and they mainly live in the capital city of Imphal. The Kukizo and Naga tribes live in the surrounding hill districts. Now, coming back to these riots, at least 130 people, out of which most of them were Kukizo tribes, have been killed and more than 50,000 people have been displaced since these clashes between the two communities broke out, according to some reports. Now, these clashes happened over a proposal to extend reservation in government jobs and education to the Maitis. So we'll come back to the riots, but first let me finish talking about the viral video and what happened to that. The police arrested a 32-year-old Maiti man identified as Khurim Hirodas as one of the suspects behind the assault of those two women. According to Al Jazeera, the families of the two survivors filed an FIR with the police on May 18th. But it took them more than a month to transfer the case to the police station under whose jurisdiction the crime had actually happened. And even after that, no action was taken. The residents claimed that the police took action only after this video went viral, that means after two months. In one more incident that happened after a day that this viral video incident had happened, Two other Kukizo women from Kang Pogpais Khopibang village were locked up in a room in Imphal and sexually assaulted by at least six men, according to an FIR that was registered by their families. They were found dead in that room hours later this incident had happened. Sources in the police administration have said that there has been a complete breakdown in the legal process since the violence had begun on May 3rd. A police officer based in one of Manipur's hill districts where the Kukizo tribe mainly lives on the condition of anonymity has revealed that they have not been able to get the police authorities from Imphal to cooperate on any of the complaints registered by the victims who were killed in the valley or have fled from there. There are about 3 million people living in Manipur, which is a northeastern state in India. Since early May, it has been a scene of clashes between the minority Kuki tribe and the larger Maiti group. Ethnic conflicts have always existed in India's northeastern states. Violence has previously broken out between these two communities mainly because 
there has been a relatively comparatively stronger state government's mighty control in the region the government was charged with adopting anti cookie tactics such as forced evictions that endangered the security of their land and an effort to portray them as undocumented immigrants a court decision in march that gave the majority mighty the scheduled tribe status that entitled them to the same financial advantages and quotas in government jobs and education as the minority cookie was the final straw for the entire unrest furthermore it made it possible for the mighty to purchase property in the kuki dominated highlands this has added more fire to the anxieties of the minority kuki tribe now all these issues that kept hurling for the kuki tribe led to protests from the kuki student organizations that eventually met with violence that broke out in early may which has now led to the situation that we are presently seeing mighty gangs started attacking kuki residents in imphal the state capital and the kuki people who tried to leave the city for the hills where they hold a majority of the land for safety were also attacked now how did the violence really start according to reports the majority of the earliest attacks on the kuki villages and communities were carried out by the mighty gangs villages were burned down the christian kuki communities more than 250 churches were destroyed uh, as the fighting kept expanding as false reports and misinformation about cookies killing and raping mighty women spread kuki women started to be specifically targeted in retaliation attacks that included rape torture and abuse beheadings have also been mentioned in a number of reports so following all these rights and ethnic confrontations dozens of homes were seen vandalized and burned in manipur ethnic tensions across the state now have the potential to spark a civil war The Kuki's long-standing demand for their own separate state has now revived and also intensified by their hostilities. The violence according to the Kuki groups has now shown them that they can no longer live in safety under the restrictions of the mighty dominant state. They have vowed to keep fighting until their own state is granted. The construction of a separate Kuki state is opposed passionately by the Maithi community and also the state government. Speaking about the government, what has been their response to this? The central BJP government's response was noticeably subdued even as the violence increased. The Manipur state government, which is actually controlled by the Maithi group and also administered by the BJP, has been charged with involvement in the violence against the Kuki minority because it permits Maithi gangs to commit these crimes. Prime Minister Narendra Modi remained silent in public for several months about the entire turmoil and has not even travelled to Manipur since the unrest started. Only after the video went viral, the one mentioned earlier in this video, made the Prime Minister take a stand on this subject and give his statement. Police have also come under fire for allegedly refusing to help cookies who have been attacked and failed to look into allegations of rape, torture and other forms of violence against this group. Now what is left to see is how the government will handle the situation and how things will unfold in Manipur. If you like this video then please share it with as many people as possible and spread the word and information about Manipur. For more such stories that matter to you do subscribe to my channel and follow the journalist next door.